An update now to the Marine that was sent to a psych ward for his Facebook posts. As we reported last week, 26-year-old Brandon Raub was sent to a psychiatric ward for controversial posts to his Facebook page. You will not violate my rights. You're looking at video of local authorities and the FBI arresting Raub outside of his Virginia home on August 16th. Raub appears to be confused, asking the authorities what crime he has committed. The FBI found his post to be anti-American and, quote, terrorist in nature. But last week, a judge found that there was no legal basis to hold Raub in the ward against his will. So what does this mean for freedom of speech in the U.S.? For the latest on this case, I was joined by John Whitehead, a Marine's attorney. Take a look. Well, uh, again, I would say our, the ruling we got, I think, is a great uh, victory for the First Amendment. But I, we, I've talked to Brandon. He was here in my office all day yesterday, and we discussed pursuing uh, a legal case, a civil rights action against the, the authorities here, the government. So he's thinking about that. I think that's a real possibility. I think we need to hold these people accountable. I, again, this is someone posting things on Facebook. There were no specific threats to any kind of individuals. And I mean, these are the things I see on the internet every day, I'm talking about revolution. In fact, most of the stuff he was quoting were song lyrics from a group called Swollen Members, a Canadian rap group. So. I mean, like I told people, it'd be dangerous to, to quote guys like John Lennon or some of the older dudes back in the older days who talked about revolution these days. So, but uh, what it says is, is that, that they are watching Facebook. The authorities are watching Facebook. They are conducting surveillance. It's a very dangerous trend. Now, Rab wasn't charged with any crime. Um, how were authorities then able to justify sending him away? Under a civil commitment statute in Virginia, and almost every state has these, what we found since getting into this case, about 20,000 people plus each year in Virginia disappear like this. Authorities arrive, arrive, arrest them, and take them away to an institution. Here, Brandon and Rob's mother got on the internet and started yelling about it and alerted us and we got involved. But most people you never know about. In fact, since getting in this case, I've had hundreds of people call me that, that this has happened to across the United States. But here's the weird thing, mainly veterans. I don't know why, except that maybe if people remember back in 2009, Janet Napolitano issued two memos called right-wing extremism and left-wing extremism. Veterans were mentioned in those extremist memos. So for some reason, our government, uh, weirdly so, under the Obama administration, seemed to, to think veterans are extremists. So they might be targeting some veterans. Now, uh, this has been argued as a First Amendment issue. Want to take a listen now um, from Brandon Raub himself, him describing some of the controversial posts that were on his Facebook. Uh, the line that I posted on my Facebook wall was, uh, sharpen up my ax, semicolon, I'm here to sever heads. Mm -hmm. And what I actually meant was that... This, you know, it's what we call a metaphor. Excuse, excuse me, yes, yeah. a metaphor, exactly. Yeah. Now, in addition to that, I do want to bring attention, John, to some of these other controversial posts. Um, want to bring them up there. One of them there. Dear men and women in, in positions in power within our government, corrupt bureaucrats, corrupt judges and police, Nazis in the Marine Corps, Barack Obama and your communist cabinet. We have another one there. Friends, if you are unaware of the great amount of evil perpetrated by the American government, I suggest you take you take your head out of the sand the day of reckoning is almost at hand and one more there the revolution is upon us i'm starting the revolution i am done waiting now um john some of these um they are they do raise eyebrows to say the least um wouldn't you say those those kinds of comments would get some kind of a reaction i mean they do raise eyebrows but Here's the key. The First Amendment is written, as James Masson, who wrote it, said, to protect the minority against the majority. And what he was talking about, people who speak out. So, I mean, I see this stuff all over the Internet. So they're going to have to start rounding up a lot of people. And some of that stuff, again, sounds like John Lennon's song, Revolution. I mean, can you quote people on the Internet these days that are extremists? Sure. But uh, a question is, what is an extremist? Uh, obviously, the government thinks these statements are extreme. but. 
Uh, Martin Luther King said some things very similar to this, by the way. I'm a big Martin Luther King fan, so I think today Martin Luther King could get rounded up for some of the things he said. And he talked about a revolution. And uh, by the way, he perpetrated a very good revolution, of, a very nonviolent. By the way, Brandon Robb does not own a weapon, and as he, at that interview which I conducted, you just, the clip from it, he says he's nonviolent. The revolution he's talking about is a cultural and political revolution. Okay, and um, we, we listened to your, your interview there, and you have described it as a metaphor. I want to ask you, how then do you draw the line? Where is the line between a threat and a metaphor? Um, how can authorities tell the difference? Well, the difference is, do you tar are you targeting somebody? I mean, I can go on the Internet and say, hey, I'd like to chop some heads off. In fact, I've seen some clips recently. Someone read a cl clips on, on, on the Internet of all these talk show hosts are saying, it's time to cut their heads off. It's time, it's time to throw them out of government. It's time to throw them in the prisons. I mean, so a lot of people are dissatisfied with government today. The question is how to parse between what is real and what is not. If they had done a background check with this man, a decorated Marine, a business owner, an upstanding member of his community, he doesn't even own a weapon. I mean, what's he going to do, poke somebody in the eye? But the point is, he's been doing this stuff for a long time. And uh, like I say, if you're going to round up Brandon Robb, it's time to round up about a million other folks right away because we're all dangerous. All right. You know, there's been a lot of discussion lately uh, about domestic terrorism, in large part due to tragedies like the one we saw most recently, the Sikh Temple shooting over in Wisconsin. And DHS had said that a way to monitor um, suspects is through social media. And this is what ha is happening in this case. They, they were monitoring his Facebook. Do you think authorities taking that step is, is crossing the line? Well, I think if you're going to conduct surveillance on American citizens, the Fourth Amendment requires, A, that you have credible evidence someone's doing something illegal. It has to be particular. Uh, conducting surveillance violates the Fourth Amendment if you don't have a search warrant. They, they hear they did not have a search warrant nor an arrest warrant. They arrested him and took him away and put him in a mental hospital. If this is a real threat, sure, the authorities should arrive, discuss this. But here, again, they have not charged him with a crime. In fact, we called both the FBI and the police. They said he committed no crime. And we went, well, why did you arrest him in the first place? Why couldn't you just quietly go up and talk to him? They lined vehicles off and down the street as if he was getting ready to blow up the trade towers. So the, the facts here, the police say he did not commit a crime. So why was he arrested? Okay, I do want to play a clip, for another clip from Brandon Raub, where he is kind of reflecting on the whole ordeal. This is with him. I, I never imagined that there would be problems to the degree that we have or, or things going on that, that are easy, easy to find if you're told to go look for them. Um, very specifically, uh, the rampant abuse of executive orders. Oh, yes. Um, well, a lot of people, both the left and the, the political left and political right, are concerned about executive orders. It gives the president dictatorial powers. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it literally gives the president the ability to write his own laws. And that's what he's doing. That's it's yeah. currently what's going on in this nation. John, I want to ask you, um, looking at the wider implications of this case, what does it mean for our First Amendment rights, and why should Americans be concerned about this case? Well, first of all, what's good about Brandon here, Brandon Robb, is that he actually has done something. He's, he speaks up. And again, the First Amendment allows that, but I, I, I tell people this. The First Amendment just doesn't allow this. It tells us, if you think your government's going the wrong direction, it's time to speak up. It says we can petition our government for a redress of grievances. Uh, so I think that the, the bigger picture here is... Uh, it's time to speak up. I write on these issues all the time. I've written on executive orders. I've written on President Obama's kill list. I'm opposed to all of that. Uh, I think our government's moving in a dangerous direction, but so does the ACLU and, and, and various right-wing groups, all groups that I work with on the left and the right. So there's a, I work with the Constitution Project out of Washington, D.C. We're all concerned. It's, a, it's an, a, a, an amalgam of about 40 different groups. We're all concerned about these things. And here we have Brandon Rod speaking out. They don't come arrest me. I'm too visible, probably, or some of these other people that work with ACLU and groups like that. Brandon Rod is an easy target. I'll say this. The civil commitments in Virginia, many of these people disappear. His mother got on the Facebook and started yelling about it, and we know about it. But I'm really concerned about these civil commitments. I think it's very, very dangerous. All right, John, thank you so much for coming on the show and bringing us the latest on this case. That was attorney John Whitehead. Thank you.